very, very wet, as you can see, and this is going to make playing conditions extremely difficult. I say we're in Kampala, not quite, we're just on the outskirts in uh, Kitende of the St. Mary's Stadium. The home side in the red and black. The visitors in that yellow with the red and the green trim. So similar conditions to this in the Central African Republic Cape Verde game, which kicked off this first round of uh, qualifying matches in the group stage. I say it's the first round, first round of matches, but it's actually the second round of qualifying. That was over in Douala in Cameroon. Once we have a Malian player down and in need of treatment, just to, perhaps the, an opportunity then to run through the two teams for you. As this gentleman uh, makes uh, our life pretty difficult. Not quite sure what's going on here. But he seems fairly determined to stand in front of the camera. Quite sure what's going on in that camp parlor. Anyway, the uh, two teams, Uganda, a changing goal for them compared to the nil nil draw with Kenya that kicked off their group stage campaign. It's uh, Group E, we're in here. Ismail Watenga is in goal for the home side a back four of Igauma Iguma excuse me Walu Simbi he's in for uh, Khalid Lawaliwa who was injured picked up a knee injury in that draw with uh, Kenya Marashid Yuko and Isaac Muleme completes the back four it's Biaro Hanga Aucho Karisa the captain Okwi who's uh, fit for the host fortunately but unfortunately we can't see the images on the pitch thanks to the uh, back of the head of that gentleman right there and Sibambi Derek and Sibambi he's uh, one of the three changes to the Ugandan starting lineup he comes in up front the forward from Smoha in Egypt and to Joseph Ochaya completes the home 11 there were three changes as well in the Mali 11 Ibrahim Muna Koro is in goal. The back four stays the same of uh, Traore. That's Charles Traore, Sacco, Kuyate, and Hamari Traore. The changes come really in midfield. Diadie Sameseku of uh, Hoffenheim lines up alongside Amadou Haidara. And another change, Mohamed Kamara, who steps in for Aliou Dieng. Adama Traore, who got the goal in the 1 0 win over Rwanda that started. Mali's qualifying campaign with all three points in Agadir. He starts again alongside Musa Dumbia, who's in for uh, Musa Genepo, who, uh, along with Lasana Kulabali, didn't get the authorization from their.
That's Ismail Watenga who steps in today into goal for the hosts. Replacing Charles Luquego, who played in the nil-nil draw against Kenya to kick off Uganda's qualifying campaign, at least with a point. They have their work cut out today. I'm pretty sure they would happily settle for a point against Mali, who really are among the heavyweights of African football, although they have been not quite as impressive in recent years. FIFA ranking has dropped down to 60th. That's the uh, puts them as the 10th ranked team in the African Confederation. But they'll be looking to do a lot better than their last World Cup qualifying campaign when they finished to bottom of a group, albeit a, a very, very tough group that included Morocco, Ivory Coast and Gabon. Very much a, a group of death. Certainly was for the Malians. As it's the hosts who are making the best of the early conditions. Ball in from a try, it was too deep. But Milton Carissa picks it up on the far side. Mali come away with it, but you're going to have it back very quickly. Was there a hand? There was indeed. Free kick in an inviting position for Mali. There's Micho, the Ugandan coach, full name Milutin Sredojevic of Serbia. He's in his second spell as the Uganda coach. Quite a character. So his side will respect Mali when they have possession and disrespect them when his side have possession. They have it now with this set piece. Just flipped over his own bar by Munkoro. There were men coming in at the back. First corner of the game then. Uganda with it. Way at the near post. Important header away it was too. Charles Traore, who helps it forward, also plays his club football in yellow with not Got more defending to do here. Kuyate uses all of that six foot four inch frame to head that one away. It's been a positive start though by Uganda in the opening 10 minutes. Here come Mali, just a little foot in. Slow that attack down. Here's the captain, Hamari Trore, getting forward as he likes to do. Kuyate, Trore under a little bit of pressure. Slides it up the line, it's still in play, is it? Not anymore. with some major absentees. Musa Gineppo and uh, Lasana Kulabali among them. That's because they play their club football in England and Italy. And because Uganda is on the red list of those two countries. 
They're not playing in this game so that they don't have to quarantine when they return to uh, their club, Southampton and Salernitana, respectively. There's no uh, Masadio Haidara of Lens either. He's injured. No Yves Basuma of Brighton and Hove Albion. He wouldn't have played in this one for the same reason as Gineppo, but criticised the Football Federation president of the Football Federation itself, and uh, it's not been selected. Mike Hill's a difficult one in these sorts of conditions. The surface water will drain off quickly, but there's a lot of it. Kali Daucho being told in no uncertain terms that that sort of challenge on Mohamed Kamra, he's not going to go down well with the referee from Mauritius. Camera stepping into the starting lineup for Aliou Dieng. Gives Mali a, an all RB Salzburg connection midfield, in fact, with uh, Samaseku, who's now at, uh, at Hoffenheim. Previously at RB Salzburg. And you've got uh, Amadou Haidara in there as well. Now at RB Leipzig, but previously at Salzburg. Of course, Salzburg away into the real top level of European football for many footballers, including Sadio Mane, also Erling Haaland, the Norway international. He's absolutely tearing it up right now with Borussia Dortmund. Ibrahim Akone. There are some very good footballers in their side, Mali, but conditions are going to make it difficult to pass the ball around. As you can see, it's holding up. Kuyate. Here's Camera. Control right. To look on the lunch for that and couldn't find Haidara. Haidara, who's got a big game coming up at the weekend as Leipzig take on Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. He's formed a successful midfield partnership with the American international Tyler Adams as Haidara. Sacco. That'll be a Marley throw. <laughs> Neither of these sides have yet qualified for a World Cup finals. Remember, just five places up for grabs. They will come from the 10 group winners in this second round of qualifying. A lot of football to be played between now and then, which is scheduled to be March 2022, when they'll be home and away legs of those playoffs. Mali will be hoping to at least give themselves the chance as well Uganda, but it would be uh, something of a surprise if Mali are not the team to come through this Group E with Kenya and Rwanda also in the group. They played yesterday, actually, in Kigali. 1-1. One, one. 
between those two. So Kenya have uh, two points, two draws in their opening two matches. He's missed his kick, has sack up. Gander in behind. And it's off Kuyate and behind for a corner. There's a Chaya. And Nancy Bambe sneaking in on that left hand side. We've had a brisk first 16 minutes in Kitende. Uganda nil, Mali nil. Uganda on the front foot. Mkoro came, didn't get that. I think it was uh, Kuyate got it away, and Mkoro gets it the second time of asking. It's nice to see the sun coming out. Hopefully, we'll dry off this artificial surface on the St. Mary Stadium. Ugandan captain you just saw there, Emmanuel Arnold Okwi. Came off in the uh, game against Kenya, but fit enough to play today. Lead the side again. Yes, Hamari Traore finds camera. So in fact, it was Adama Traore down this right hand side. The Man who'll play in the champion European Champions League group stage this season with Sheriff Tiras ball. Traore's ball in. He's got European football to look forward to as well with Ren in the new Europa Conference League. Ren kicking off their group stage campaign against Tottenham Hotspur next week. Saka left that a little bit short. Made it a bit tight there for Kuyate, who got caught. It was Milton Carries who came absolutely barreling in, and I'm not surprised he's going to get a little bit of a talking to from the referee. Plenty of commitment from both sides in the opening 19 minutes, but no goals, no chances as yet to speak of. That was ambitious from Amari Traore. He does have quite a shot on him. to get the corner he wanted is Ibrahim Akone. Been a very good goal scoring form actually for his new club in Norway, Sarpsborg. As Ibrahim Akone, eight goals in 16 league games in the Norwegian top flight. Been in Norway some time now, He's joined uh, Haugesund back in 2018. Best clearance by Kuyate. Sacco with that bleached crop right across the top of his head. Easily identifiable for fans and commentators alike, which is uh, always nice. Here's Traore. Chases on. 
who can get there at Adama Traore. They did come through Africa Cup of Nations qualifying very well indeed did Mali top their group. Although against Guinea, Namibia and Chad, the overwhelming favourites to earn a place in Cameroon for the tournament, which will actually take place early in 2022. Traore. Kind of tracking back to deny Traore what would, what would have been a decent shooting opportunity. Amari Traore's attempt to cross is behind for a corner. Quite an evenly balanced game so far. Dumbia into the starting line for Musa Gineppo today. The last man. Another number of French based players in this Mali lineup. Foul, surely. No, says the referee Adama Traore, who looked to me like he'd been pushed in the back. with the challenge on Traoric. For the moment, Mali, for all their individual talent, not able to make inroads on the Ugandan back line. Yet to trouble Ismail Watenge in the Uganda goal. Uganda who are looking for a new first choice goalkeeper following uh, Dennis Onyango's retirement a long time goalkeeper and captain just a couple of months ago. Watenga did seem to be the first choice but he didn't start the last game that was Luquego. Luquego keeping a clean sheet as well. on the bench for this one, Luquego. Watenga given the arduous task of trying to keep Mali at bay. So far, so good for Micho and this Uganda side. 25 minutes gone nearly. Uganda nil, Mali nil. You have to say a draw or uh, Uganda would be a great result out of this one. Not so much for Mali. Kuyate stops that swift counter-attack. Camera can't find a way through. Now finds Trollrick. That's going to be cut out. Comfortably so. But then carelessly given away. Musa Dumbia. Looking for the run of Traore. That was our ball, surely. Right on the edge of the area. And after some great anticipation from Marashid Yuko, he's now given Mali a really handily placed free kick just outside. His own penalty area. 
That's the sort of range from which they practice free kicks. He's a little bit unlucky. Is the express defender. But this is a real opportunity to at least test Watanga, if not beat him. Haidara is there, Dumbia is there, Haidara is walking off. Adama Traore is there. Looks like Dumbia Traore will take this one. Traore with the left, Dumbia with the right. I would say the uh, run-ups look like it's going to be Traore. Can't see Dumbia hitting it from there. It is Traore. Couldn't force it through the wall. Dumbia on the follow-up. Stoic defending from Uganda. Referee just reducing the argy bargy in the middle. Haidara's ball in. And he came for it. Watengi didn't get that. And the cry was not one of pain, but of anguish. Dia Dia Samaseko knows that was an opportunity. Got there in front of Watenga. If he kept his header down, that was 1-0. Received a cake on his 52nd birthday from his squad. Last Tuesday, did Micho. Something of a legend in Ugandan football is the Serbian. This game taking place four days after the fifth anniversary of him clinching qualification for the Nations Cup. First time that they had been in the competition since 1972. My apologies, not 72, 78. But you get the idea. Half an hour gone. Uganda nil, Mali nil. In this Group E World Cup qualifier. Uganda with a corner. In swinger. It's a Mali header away and a Mali block. For the moment, both sides defending resolutely. Little turn from Okwi. Piante there again. Uganda are going to have to be a little bit more clever than playing aerial balls towards. Kiki Kuyate. Mets defender is very, very strong in the air. He has Adama Traore. He's got Hamari Traore outside him. Always oh, struggling to get on the end of that one was the Ren fullback. And you saw that the lying water on the surface. Still pretty deep on this near side where the sun hasn't reached yet.
Nice first touch. Second wasn't quite as good. Aydara. He was asking a lot of Musa Dumbia. Pressing is causing Uganda a problem. One side not able to get out of their half for the moment. Kone and wide to Dumbia. It's a foul, and you heard the frustration from the Ugandan coach shouting, No, no. Milton Carissa again, the culprit. Another set piece opportunity for Mali. Amadou Haidara. Delivers with the right foot. Straight at Watenga. Comfortable catch for him. Delivery needs to be better from set pieces from Mali, and it should be as well. With the quality that they have. And not so far, with 12 minutes to go until half time. Uganda nil, Mali nil. And still, neither side able to create a clear cut opportunity. Was always struggling to get there was Duco, and he's going to go in the book for that challenge on Kone. Forming a centre back pairing with his. Express teammate Enoch Walosimbi today. Might play for Express, but he's a little bit late on that challenge, to say the least. And it's another free kick, pretty much in the same place that we saw Haidara take one a minute or so ago. He wasted it, and that's why we've got Musa Dumbia taking it this time. Better from Dumbia. And that was an opportunity. And he was offside anyway. Wouldn't have counted. Kuyate it was, I think, who got his head to it. Well, in fact, it wasn't. It was, as you saw there, Samaseiku. Second headed opportunity for the Hoffenheim man. That's a foul. Needless as well from Charles Traore. On Milton Carissa. And a free kick opportunity for Uganda now. Been struggling for form of Uganda. Winless in eight, but that goalless draw in Kenya. At least a positive result. And they've held Mali relatively comfortably in this opening 35 minutes. And now have an opportunity. Yeah. 
Is he going to go for goal? He is. Bobosi Biarohanga, the 19-year-old, not lacking confidence. Although he was lacking precision from that set piece, absolutely rifled it into the wall, and I'm not surprised. But the man who was struck by the ball needs a, a little bit of a moment. Not sure if Ibrahim Akone, well, you could see where he took it. Right on the chest, just below the shoulder. Was an absolute blockbuster of a shot from Biarohanga. Only made his senior international debut for Uganda back in June. having to go off and Uganda I think will just play the ball back to Mali and the referee is just going to drop it sensibly for Charles Trory and here we go again Trony can drop back on Haidara looks for Kone to the run of Hamari Traore. Well, they wanted a corner. Traore, in fact, left it, thinking it was a corner. Well, he was quite right, was the assistant referee. Not even sure why Mali were appealing very clearly. No Uganda player touched it. Muleme's ball forward. It's smashed out of play by Sakop. There he is, Falai Sako plays his club football in Portugal with uh, Vitoria Guimarães. Previously had spells in Hungary and Belgium. What a circuitous route to Portugal, and he's got some defending to do here. Just too many yellow shirts. Kone. Traore, it's a lovely ball. Good run from Traore as well. Cuts inside. And he's stopped in his tracks. Really good challenge, too, by Yuko. He's just been booked. Which won't have helped his confidence, but that challenge certainly will have. See why Muleme wanted a few words with Ibrahim Akane there. Really full blooded challenge from the Mali centre forward. Sako. Oh, he's a big man, burly man is Kone. That was a lovely first touch. Didn't have any support though. Had it. Doesn't know where the ball has dropped. Mali have been wasteful at set pieces so far. There's a man arriving at the back. It's a good header across by Kuyate. Was, was a better chance than Adama Traore made of it as well. Completely missed his kick. He 
Here's Muleme. Not a great touch from Okwi. We're into the final five minutes of the first half. Still Uganda nil, Mali nil. Haidara. Nice turn on the edge of the box from Dumbia trying to get a shot away. And very good defending by Walu Simbi. Anticipated the shot from the Ransman. Chore with the throw. Camera dispossessed. Free kick to Uganda. And Mitchell, the coach, will be pretty happy with what he's seen so far. Not sure the same can be said for the Mali coach, Mohamed Magasuba. Would have expected more of a threat from his side. Had that header from Diadia Samaseku from a corner. But other than that, Uganda have kept things quite tight at the back. This is a side that was beaten in a recent friendly 3-2 by South Africa. They've looked very sound defensively so far. Amari Traore with this free kick. A line of yellow and red shirts on the edge of the penalty area. Trower is ball in. Kone got his head to it. Was just trying to help it towards goal. Use the pace of the ball. Inside the final minutes of the 45 in Kampala. It's Kuyate and Okwi. We've taken a bit of a knock. Okwi just rather collapsed into Kuyate. Amari Traore. Haidara in towards Kone. Tried the same trick again. Put it a bit closer this time. Two minutes added on at the end of the first half then. And as the pitch dries out, it's getting bouncier and quicker. Control it. Out of play. Is the time for Mali to create a scoring opportunity in the 60 seconds or so that's left. Cool defending from Yukop. Control it. 
Kone. Haidara. Dumbia's wide left. Dumbia. Goes for goal. Flashes that one just over the bar. I think Watenga knew it was going over, but it didn't go over by much. Just shifted it onto his right foot so quickly, did Musa Dumbia. Kunyati wins the header again. And that's half time in Kampala. Uganda nil, Mali nil. Not much goal mouth action between these two. That's why it's goalless at half time at St. Mary's Stadium. That is the end of the past perfect minutes of this match in the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 qualifiers. And the game is still near deal between Uganda and Mali. We want to recognize the presence of the FUFA president, Honorable Ingenia Moses Magogo, the first FUFA vice president, Mr. Justice Mugisha, the second vice president, Mr. Darius Mugoye, the third vice president, Honorable Florence Natural Chiji. The FUFA executive members and the FUFA delegates on this match. You're most welcome. A big thank you to the official sponsors of the Uganda.
a special note, ladies and gentlemen. I'm allowed to stand before you here that you may watch me. To request you social distance, please. Because this game is live on TV, and FUFA will be fine if you're not doing that. We want at least two seats in between any of you. Please, please, I don't want to mention your names on the microphone because I can and I know every one of you seated there. Thank you. Thank you. Those who are doing it, thank you. Please, at least two seats in between you. At least two seats. Yes, at least two seats. You can even make four. The VIP is very wide for you to social distance. And please, your masks on. Have your masks on. Have your masks on. Thank you. Thank you. back to the St. Mary's Stadium. We're just outside Kampala on the Entebbe Road, and it's Uganda, the hosts, stepping back out onto the pitch. A, a big contrast between the start of the second half here and the start of the first, where it was absolutely pouring down. And you can see that still on this near side where the sun hasn't reached just yet, the shadow cast by the stand, the water, still lying on this artificial surface. You... Uganda then back out on the pitch. It's nil-nil in their second Group E 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifier. They're at home to Mali. They've held so far the favourites in this group. Kenya and Rwanda, remember, they played yesterday, a 1-1 draw in Kigali. Rwanda, who were beaten by Mali in their opening game. And Darmat Traore with the goal for the Eagles. Uganda coming into this one with a point thanks to their 0-0 draw in Kenya. They're proving hard to break down. For Hamari Traore, Traore, and his teammates. Now Traore has come out without the captain's armband. Are we going to see a change? He captain does he decide in the first half? I don't think we are. I think he's just forgotten it.
nervous look on the face of Mohamed Makasuba, the Mali coach. Be fully expecting of three points here today. Mali get us underway in the second half then at the St. Mary's Stadium in Uganda. It's the hosts nil, Mali nil after 45 minutes. Still a lot of standing water on the pitch on this near side. A torrential downpour that lasted into the first 10 or 15 minutes of the game. Fortunately abating. If it had continued, I'm not sure the game would have been able to be played to a finish. The surface was really clogging up. The ball not running at all well. Get the long ball forward. And it was a test for Munkoro. Didn't come through it particularly convincingly and he took a blow, I think, to the stomach for his troubles. Emmanuel Okwi, the Ugandan captain in there as well. And every right to go for it. Okay, sorry. Couldn't have even seen Mokoro coming for the ball, although he must have suspected that the goalkeeper would try and get there. And Hamari Traor has just realized. That's the captain's armband. in charge of Mali since 2017 is Mohamed Magasuba. Took interim charge after Alan Gires left. Appointed full-time in October 2019. As Mokoro gets a little bit of the ice bag on the chest, the TP Mazembe player. Actually coming up against one of his club teammates today, Joseph Achaya, the Uganda number two. No significant damage done to the Mali goalkeeper. Here's Dumbia trying to take that on the run. Good defending by Dennis Iguma. Iguma, who's back playing football in Uganda after a six year spell in Lebanon. Cry of pain from Shaltra all right. Look at how it oh, you can see what happened. I thought it might have been the landing, but it wasn't. It was a boot from Milton Carissa, who's left his mark on more than one or two Mali players, it has to be said. That's a Mali troll, right? Finally gets the captain's armband back. damage hopefully to Charles Traor who as you can see has already got that right knee heavily strapped away by Kuryate very solid presence at the center of the Mali defense was Kuryate in that first half
Well, expected to be the mainstay of the Mets defense for a number of years as well, replacing another African international, John Boy of Ghana, who played at Wren as well. He's now left for the Persian Gulf to continue his career there, the veteran Ghanaian defender. Trollrick, nice little ball inside. They do link up well down that right hand side, do the two trial race. Dharma and Hamari. Out swinging corner. And once again, as he did in the first half, Samaseku. Getting free in the penalty area to set piece. That one was straight at Watenga. The Hoffenheim midfielder is losing his man almost every time the ball goes into that Ugandan box. And surely sooner or later that is going to cause the hosts a problem. Good interception by Biaro Hange, who's had a very busy game, the 19 year old. Uganda number six. Plays it out wide to Muleme. Gets it back to Zaucho. On quick to Ochaya. Good defending by Sako. At the cost of a throw. forward attack attack that's the cry from the bench it's attacked the ball and Kuyate did exactly that and got the free kick Another Mali free kick. Sack up. Why to trial right? Mari Trora again. Chance for the Mali captain to cross and he wastes it and wastes it badly. And time really. Have done so much better there. on the edge of his technical area there is Micho, the Ugandan coach. You can see just at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> Ball was aimed up towards Ansi Bambi. Manuelu Simbi. Well won by Muleme, who plays his club football in the beautiful Czech capital Prague. For Sparta or Slavia, though, but for uh, Victoria Zhishkov, 
Jishko, which is a neighborhood of Prague. Camera, a wide to troll it. Good pressure you heard from Micho. That challenge which forced Traore to play the ball earlier and harder than he would have liked. It's off the head of Traore. Ten minutes gone in the second half. Uganda nil, Mali nil, and things going according to plan for the host, you'd have to say. If they could nick a goal, that really would put the cat among the pigeons, or the perhaps the crane among the pigeons. Reference to their national bird, which features on the flag. Aydara. Marley, though, do have that superior individual quality all over the pitch can they make it tell though they haven't so far nice little spin from dumbia who switched over to the right hand side early in this second half was on the left in the first not quite sure why carissa was appealing for the throw in because he must have known that he touched it out of play traore with the throw up towards Conan, neat little flick by the big man, but doesn't find a teammate. Camera. They've been aggressive, have Uganda, but haven't really gone over the top, both metaphorically and literally. For the moment, Mali are having a problem. They just can't deal with it. Can't find a way through. Oh, is a red shirt in the way, covering, tackling, battling, blocking. Camera. There you go. Case in point. Okwi getting back. You can then captain who's fouled. I'm do high Dara with the challenge. It's timed by the Leipzig midfielder. hoping to follow in the footsteps of somebody like the Guinea midfielder Naby Keita who really shone at Leipzig and moved on to Liverpool not suggesting that Aydara should be looking to leave Leipzig because they are very much a Bundesliga powerhouse recent Champions League semi-finalists as well season before last that's a good little burst of speed and he's fouled his Dumbia. When he gets up ahead of steam with the ball at his feet, he can be very difficult to stop Musa Dumbia. And he just drew young Enoch Wallace into the challenge. Knew what he was looking for. And he found it, did Dumbia. And it's a free kick. In an excellent position for Mali. Just before the hour mark. We've not seen Ismail Watenga seriously challenged. There were seven Mali players around the ball. And one of them's now heading off. Mohamed Kamara is going to be replaced. 
of the Celtics, Mohamed Kamara, and all the Celtics. And on comes Adama Traore. Adama Nos Traore. If we're not going to get ourselves too confused, the former Lille and Monaco midfielder. It's actually just 23 days between the two Adama Traores who are both out there now. Number 10 and number 14. Number 10, the younger of the two, as the ball comes in. It was the substitute with his first touch, causing a real scare. You heard the scream from a small number of people in the stand on this near side. Wasn't too far away, was he? This game essentially being played behind closed doors due to COVID-19 pandemic. Only 30 journalists have been given accreditation for the match. It was a very stern announcement before kickoff that anybody who wasn't social distancing would be ejected from the ground. Bad to say that the Uganda players didn't get the memo because they have certainly gotten very, very tight to the Mali players. Shut down the space for them to create or to pose a threat to them very quickly. Will they be able to keep up this tempo? Here goes Haidara. It's a nice little ball. Adama Traore. He's not going to get that. can see the frustration on Haidara's face and the smiles on those on the Ugandan bench because it's going well for them. The introduction of the second Adama Traore. No doubt to try and up the creative quotient in this Mali side. Trying to find a way to unlock the home defence. Looks like a young Biaru Hanger is sticking very, very close to the Mali number 10. Though. Ugandan players not happy with the reaction from Ibrahim Akone. The challenge from Yuko, who's already been booked. Getting a little messy and a little heated down there. But now he's holding his leg. He's Kone, does somebody stand on it? Kuyate is getting in there as well. Dumbia says somebody stamped on Kone. How is this going to be resolved? Sacco as well, suggesting there was a stamp in there. Saying, come on to Okwi, the Ugandan captain. What is our referee from Mauritius going to make of all this? It's a red card. It's a red card. A straight red as well for Marishid Yuko. And Uganda will play the last 25 minutes with 10 men.
Well, that is a big blow. He was already walking a tightrope, having been booked some 11 minutes before half time. It's always going to be difficult for a centre back then to make challenges. His arm was high on Kone, although for my money, Kone did make rather a meal of it. And we're going to have Ugandan changes. I just wonder if that's in response to the red card or were they going to happen anyway? Regardless, Uganda down to 10 men. Yuko is off. Let's have a look at that again. Look at the right arm. It was high. Well, that was silly as well from Yuko. He knows he's been booked. And then where is the stamp that they're talking about? Well, we're not going to see it. Not quite sure if the red card is for the high arm on Kone or the stamp which the Mali players were so incensed about well, Kone's up on his feet no lasting damage it would seem but what sort of damage will that red card have done to Uganda the ball was running out of play all he had to do was step across Kone. Didn't have to even touch him. It's going nowhere, Kone. A little bit of a rush of blood to the head from Marashid Yuko. Watenga just eases the worries, the concerns of the Ugandan 10 men out there now. said they've been working hard they're going to have to work an extra 10 percent harder that's why we'll see changes from each up hasn't made any just yet so he can change more than half the players out there the outfield players out there Carissa, who's down holding his head, the man who plays his club football at the Ugandan side, Vipers. And here come those changes. You just saw one there. Wafula Innocent Isimu is the number 14. And it's Okwe, the captain, who's going to make way. Who's taking the captain's armband? Substitution for Uganda Prince. Out is captain. Okwe is captain off. And old shot for team Asimu Wafula Innocent. And Asimu is on. Out also for Uganda Prince. Shot to Joseph Ochaya. And all the Mustafa Kiza. Mustafa Kiza, who takes that set piece, Bravo. is also one. Plays his club football in Canada in the Montreal Impact. He's a teammate of the Kenyan superstar Victor Wanyema. Is Musadumbia. 20 more minutes left. 10 man of Uganda, nil, Mali nil. This will be a rear guard action from the host now, and Mali trying to capitalize on their advantage. Muleme launches it forward. It's a try who's made way for Kiza. suspect it'll be largely one-way traffic now for the remaining 20 minutes shall troll it Kuyate Sako 
hardly mentioned those two in the second half. That's because Uganda have not posed any sort of a goal threat. Traore trying to thread it through. Looking for his namesake, Adama Traore. And now every second that ticks away will be warmly greeted by the Ugandan coach, Micho. Here's Sako. Kuyate. Dumbia. Now back on his more usual left side. I was behind the Dharma Trower. That was a poor bit of play from Dumbia. It's a nice bit of play from Iguma, but you saw. Sorry, it was a Simu. In fact, you saw that the the water on the pitch just held up the ball unhelpfully for him. to go. Dumbia. Space for Traore. Steps inside onto his weaker foot. Dumbia. Still Traore. Oh, that was nicely done, and that's a foul. down by NC Bambi. Traore and Dumbia are there. Traore with the left foot. Dumbia with the right. Piero Hanger and Carissa in the wall. Got to be Dumbia's ball in. And again, it's too close to Watenga, who's unchallenged. And Uganda can break here. Oh, they might have been able to. No water on that far side to hold the ball up, though. Kuyate. Mali will come again. They need a little bit of inspiration in the final third. Oh, they need to start shooting from distance. Dumbia. That's not going to be easy either with all the red shirts packed almost into their final third. It's help forward. That's easy for Watanga, and they'll take that all day, every day, will Uganda in this situation. It will be a big result for them to get a draw here. Be level on two points with Kenya and just two points behind Mali. Rwanda bottom of the table after two games. It's a double header with Rwanda awaiting Uganda in October. Away then home. Yes, Amari Traore. Mali will be at home to Kenya. The first uh, leg, if you like, of their doubleheader. With the East Africans, here's Sako. Look where the Mali centre-back is. Adama Traore lines up the shot. Frustration. 
for the substitute. 26 now with Dama Traore, and his career has not really taken off in the way that many expected it would. When he was the player of the tournament back at the 2015 Under 20 World Cup, Mali finished third, you may remember. Signed for Monaco, but in the five years there, didn't establish himself in the first team. Now plays his club football in Hatay Sport in Turkey. He has high Darat. Maybe a chance for him to shoot Traore. And Traore. And the sting taken out of it. Omatenga can coolly eat up a few seconds. They've been very impressive defensively. Have Uganda may not be enough eventually to take them through to the third round of qualifying for Qatar 2022. But there's definitely something there for Micho to build on. on the attack and they're going to have a free kick here on tidy was a I think it was the culprit the challenge on Milton Carissa indeed it was a real opportunity here Not listening to his goalkeeper, it's Musa Dumbia. I don't think he wants to be in the wall, does he? It's driven in. And in the end, Munkoro looked a little uncomfortable pushing that one over his own crossbar. It was going in as well from Mustafa Kiza. I think it was meant to the shot. He was meant to be drilling it in for one of his teammates. But it made life uncomfortable for Munkoro. And again, not this time. Munkoro with the clean catch just inside that six yard area. Mentioned before that he was, or he is a too puissant Mazembe player, won the African Champions League. Back in 2015 with the DRC powerhouse. Amari Traore. Almost forgetting about the ball. Here's Adama Traore. Space for Dumbia. Intelligent header back, but still no space. Uganda. Very well drilled indeed. Haidara. 11 minutes to go. Kiza with the block. Going to have another change for the hosts. Derek and Ansi Bambi, who's heading off. Double change, in fact. Number 10 is Stephen Mokwala. And it's the young and Quietly impressive for Bossi Biarohanga, who makes way. I'm sure that Ugandan football fans will be seeing a lot more of him in the years to come. Just 19. Very impressive in that defensive midfield role. 
He's replaced by Moses Waiswa, who was in the starting lineup against Kenya. Fresh legs on for 10 minutes to try and hold on to this point. It would have already been a very good result with 11 men on the pitch, but with 10 men. Remember Marashid Yuko sent off. 65 minutes. Marley substitutes warming up as well. And we see a change from them. Try and find a way through. Charles Trollery with the throw. Nine minutes left at St. Mary's Stadium in Kitende, just outside Kampala. Uganda nil, Mali nil. Dama Traore. Given away by Walu Simbri after he'd done well to intercept the pass. it again to Uganda they're making life so difficult for Mali who are trying to play through them but just not finding the right pass and the space has been absolutely suffocated by the hosts in red there's a little bit of room to maneuver for Musa Dumbia Steve McQuala trying to make headway and he gets a free kick and that will lead up a few more precious seconds for the hosts and add to the frustration of the Mali coach Mohamed Makasuba this is not what they came to Uganda for Saguma launches it forward. Kuyate is there again. They really should have learned by now that playing a ball in the air into the Mali box is going to end on the head of the towering number five. He was playing club football in Morocco was Bubakar Kiki Kuyate when he was spotted by Sporting Lisbon. The Portuguese Giants. Adama Traore. Traore again. It's another Ugandan player in the way when the ball comes into their box. Time ticking down for both teams. Uganda will be happy about that. Not Mali. Strolry gets to the ball. It's a good cross as well. It was through the hands of Watenga. No one there in a yellow shirt to take advantage of. Here's Haidara. Driving run. Just another outstretched leg. Walu Simbi this time. They are going to be very tough to beat now Uganda in this qualifying group. They may not have a lot of goal threat, but they certainly are well drilled at the back. It's another good challenge. 
every time a Mali player has turned and thought he had space to drive towards goal. He's found the route blocked well and truly. It's a sign of just how well they've defended that we've barely seen Ibrahim Kone in the second half. The Mali number nine. As Dumbia makes way. Substitution for Mali. And on comes Lassine Sinayoko. Kone makes way. No surprise there. Kone off. And Hamadou Sinayoko. Is on. What effect will that have on Mali? Uganda, though, for the moment on the front foot, just lost his bearings there. Did Milton Carissa and Mali can counter attack now? Just run away from him. Lassine Sinioko. Three minutes and counting for the ten men of Uganda. Mali will no doubt throw absolutely everything at them, though. Here goes Trori. Easily cleared. Adama Trori now. Sinioko, the young forward from the French club. Oh, set. Good ball into the near post. Aim towards Hamidou Sinayoko. 14 years between the two Sinayoko strikers. Masin, 21. Hamidou, vastly experienced at 35. Adama Troll right now. And again, a wasted set piece by Mali. Two minutes remain of the 90. Ten men of Uganda nil, Mali nil. Puyate probably will have four or five minutes to be added on here. There was quite a lot of huffing and puffing when Yuko was sent off on 65 minutes. And Dama Trori thought about the shot, I think, and then maybe should have taken it on. So Yoko seeing the ball just run over his foot. But another Ugandan substitution. Ibrahim Orit. On in place of Milton Carissa. Orit also a winger. Just to give Mali something to think about on the counter attack. Well, they've made all their substitutions. Of Uganda, they've played every single card. Is it going to be enough to bring them a point? It's 
looking good. Seconds away from finding out just how much time will be added on here at the St. Mary Stadium in Kitende. <laughs> Only three minutes. And that'll be absolute delight for the Uganda bench. Would have expected a little bit more, especially with all the substitutions we've had as well. Going to have another one as well. Before full time. Romanige Kwame. Looks like he's going to come on. Just signed for Trois in Liga from Lille. Good catch by Watenga, but not a great ball into the box. They just haven't tested Ismail Watenga anywhere near enough of Mali, although that is testament to just how well Watenga's teammates have defended in front of him. Koyame waits to come on. Sinioko. Kuyate again. Amari Traore. Everybody bar Ibrahim Munkoro, the Mali goalkeeper, is in the Ugandan half. Or one shot Traore. Just gives Uganda an easy opportunity to clear. Use up a few more seconds. Traore with the shot. Well, they haven't tried that enough of Mali. And now we're going to have that change. Or are we? Been waiting a while as Kuyame. And finally can come on in place of Amadou Haidara. Disappointing day at the office for the Leipzig midfielder. We've had nearly all of the three minutes to be added on here. If there's going to be drama, it's going to be late, late drama. And that's the final whistle. It's a point for the 10 men of Uganda. A brave rear guard action from Micho's side. Disappointing for Mali, who didn't produce enough going forward. It's ended here. Uganda nil, Mali nil.